couple that I'm gonna read are this character that I'm working on named Lucy. It's her birthday today, and four states have banned abortion. The fatal heart that may or may not have begun to beat was poisoned by a pill. She's been hospitalized four times in the last month for stomach problems. She knows that babies don't grow in stomachs, it just looks that way. She knows the Constitution grows from a crack in the concrete of a church. Someone else's church, her body is under arrest. She pulls at the flesh of her belly, wondering what could have stretched itself alive under the thin veil of her skin. What evil could have leached her body back to a broken stairwell in an air cast? It's no surprise she sprains her ankle so frequently. The photographs from that night have stitches. The crutches were in the kitchen. The bleeding took so long to stop. We broke into her through the bedroom window and her belly didn't bulge with the apology. Federal funding is cut and she knows today would have been your birthday. Today you would have been five years old. Today the clinic's closed in Wisconsin. Today she is not a mommy or a murderer or the shaking body of an emotion language has yet to breach. She said no. She said stop. She said nothing. Through the closed eyes of too much alcohol and the unknown predators of a 17-year-old child, she was a fucking child. She won't wear heels, go to the ATM at night, or cry in public. She knows your pulse. It's the quickening breath of the night tremors beat out in cut time. There's a non-linear line that looks like a heartbeat monitor. Today would have been your birthday. She wonders if you would have had his eyes. She wonders if he paid for your heart to stop. Today would have been your birthday, but she goes to sleep with a stomach ache, a chipped smile, and a vision of your infant fingernails. She thinks about all the other children wearing women's breasts, and all the children that will be born with his eyes, or his eyes. There are four states that protect the offspring of rapists over the crime scene of her skin. Four states where you were murdered. Four states where she is wanted, where her body is expected to look like an apology. She chews on the inside of her lip until blood trickles through her teeth, flies out the front door in her pajama pants, gets a birthday card from Walgreens, writes on the inside, Dear beautiful baby, I was not strong enough to love you. My body is never an apology. Still, every day, I am so sorry. M-80s are exploding all around her apartment. It's midnight and she hasn't been to bed this early since she was a child. She can't sleep. Not because of the noise outside her windows, but because of the noise inside her head. She understands the word unrest and wonders if anyone else really does. She got into a fight with the East Coast. The East Coast has 18-year-olds with bigger boobs and younger faces. She feels her face for a turn signal and turns a red light and runs a red light. She walks around the questions she cradles in the lull of her tongue and tries not to swallow them this time. Is there more space between your hand and the door or your lips and the receiver? He can't answer and she assumes a tsunami and remembers the last time she nearly drowned. She remembers her engagement to the wounded poet on his last leg. She remembers the rent money and empty bottles of Jack. She remembers two different men and how badly a face can become distorted into something distrustful and lackluster. She remembers the police how the sirens danced across the stairwell, <coughs> how many officers sat on his arms and where he hid the tapes. Yonkers sobs across the payphone wires and begs for her beauty. Yonkers shook under the loss. Yonkers was the last time she ever believed in something so big it could swallow a millennium of maybe and worthless and where will we go from here? She left romance in the dive bar on the corner across from the Mount Vernon West. She left it in the ashtray, the trash can, the closet door, and the bare bed springs. Yonkers calls her every year on her birthday. Yonkers knows her real name and wears it well. The East Coast called to say it was explosive and overblown. That the bloom under her chest was starting to fade to a color that couldn't be considered. She turned away from California's lips. She turned away from the brown eyes and long lashes. She stays true to a forthcoming rejection and bites the cotton at the seams. She's collecting gutter water in her suitcase. She's got Yonkers on her back, she's got Brooklyn on her knees, and the East Coast will never understand how to hold her at the right angle, how to make all the weight slide into her back pocket. She remembers to map out the failure on her forearms, above her knees, below her neck. She crosses out any synonym that could be mistaken for permanence. She tried to say the right song, but she named herself instead. 
Brooklyn is broken down on the L. The Bronx has too much ammunition and never enough cobblestones. She can hear how far away the East Coast is and doubts that it will ever feel like home again. This is the last Lucy one for now. <clears throat> she knows she's an act of hypocrisy. She knows she forfeits the game before the second half starts. She knows she isn't straight. The flowers are blooming in the baseline of her closet. The hangers are dancing with their twisted necks around the bar. The plum blossoms are still falling. She's too much for most men to handle, and she's done thinking this is a shortcoming. Maybe she'd fit better into the soft spot of a left cheekbone, a higher cheekbone, a feminine nose. She's contorted herself into the body of a girl, and it's never belonged, but she doesn't <laughs> want to be a boy. She doesn't want to be something that can fall off the tongue in an insult. Most days, she just doesn't want to be. It's not that she doesn't love the East Coast. It's just hard to belong to anyone right now. She wants to belong to herself. She can't stand the idea of a man's name around her finger, no matter how soft and sweet he is, and everybody knows New York is never soft. She doesn't believe in monogamy. She thinks pain is the most integral part of her landscape. She thinks one day she'll meet someone who can hug her instead of pointing out how little sense she makes. One day someone will think the dent in her skull is beautiful. The scars on her legs will be the storyline, and every time the world ends, they'll wonder how come it took this long. Then they'll hug her, and everything will piece itself whole again. They'll plant lilies in the garden and call long distance every day to wherever their sisters live. When she thinks about growing old, she sees a cottage in the woods overflowing with books and a baby, and she sees the delicate face of a woman. Deep down, she knows she's just playing house with an unwilling participant, but she isn't ready for the one. The one is named Lily or Sophie, or Macy, or May. She rains hard and breaks candlesticks in half when she's angry. It's an old habit, it hurts no one. Macy hurts no one. Sophie cries when her mother won't come to their wedding. Lily adopts three children and grows geraniums in a part of the world where they shouldn't be able to take root. May is the last month she'll live. She can't take root here with you, with this body that feels so outdated and wrong. She's cutting it till it looks less like a girl and more like a woman and more like a boy and less like a man and more like a month that would let two bodies break even and open and whole in a way that makes no sense at all, in a way that makes sense to them. This is called There's Not Even Room Enough to Be Anywhere, which is stolen from Bob Dylan's song. Nothing can stop the flat line of my sense. Something sharp against the dull I have become. My world beckons for a seam to spill from. I have been contained for long enough. The skin is too tight to breathe in. Tonight, I will need a rope ladder because shadows are falling and I need to get out of the way. Handle which is the name of my street in bumfuck, New York. <laughs> a street lamp flickers and goes out. The wind scrapes a styrofoam box across the pockmarked road. I press a cigarette to my lips, inhale deeper than I should, watch snow fall in the yellow halo around bare branches. Close my eyes, the indigo taste of camels, and my back is pressed against the brown bricks outside crossroads. I am 17. Snow covers the quad. A hand reaches over, the scratch of a bick under my chin. The world is raw again. My name is pressed between my fingers. The street light hums and comes back to life. I stub out my cigarette and wait till this street calls my name. <clears throat> There's a little blue-haired grandmother rocking herself to sleep in my abdomen. She sees all things broken in terms of the light they refract. Her knitting needles poked a hole in my diaphragm. It's hard to breathe when you're near me. How am I doing on time? Have one more or am I done? One more. All right. Where is it? Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to start doing this. 
Rock me, mom, like a wagon wheel. Rock me any way you feel. Rock me, mom, like the wind and rain. Rock me like a southbound train. Hey, mom, rock me. I wear my broken leather to grow wings and carry me off toward the waning moon. I'm easily swept up into an extreme sort of happiness that makes people disbelieve my suicide every time it happens. I spent hours curled up and worthless like a baby bird starving in a nest, still waiting after all these years for someone to return to feed it. I've got a fuck you the size of Texas. I've got a soft spot for the dysfunction that keeps me alive. There is nothing that I cannot survive, but I've gotten sick of a life picking up speed for survival. Living is something more dormant and less abrasive. I've got false idols and a fake tooth to remind me I still can't sleep because of what you did in the shower. I was so small, grown enough to remember. No matter what happens, I will never believe anyone has really loved me. I'm looking through the peephole in the back of this body, staring into the futureless hours of dawns that broke my back in two. I've got morning glories wrapped around my forearms to hide the access point. I dug through every body I carry on my back to find what used to live here, but I think I scared whatever it is off. There's nothing here but mistakes and hyperboles, and even that's an exaggeration. I am life exaggerated. I am life under the glowing prick of a magnifying glass right before the flame. I am loose ends and nerves that hide in the latest body I bore. I am still what you carried on your shoulder into the woods beyond the spit and shadow of a bonfire. I am no witnesses. I am the dark alley that roots keys in the crotch of a fist. I am building a place for women to breathe. I can love you bigger than you were before. Bigger than the first kiss you didn't want. We'll go brick by brick to architecture that cuts the sky in half. So beautiful, so fierce. We'll carve ourselves a love that isn't afraid of its own fist. I am more pulp than juice. I refuse to go down easy. I will die a thousand times more and carry these bodies like they're broken, like I don't love them, like it isn't an honor to have been so much alive and so little restraint.